What's good YouTube and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over some Warzone settings. These settings are going to be good for not only PC, but also for console. So these are some of the settings that you guys can use for you console players. We're also going to be going over some of my PC optimizations that I run in order to get the most amount of frames possible out of my PC. And if you guys enjoy the video and find any of this information helpful, don't forget to leave a like on this video. If you want to come back for more of my content, don't forget to subscribe with post notifications turned on. That way you guys know every time I upload one of these videos like these. So let me go ahead and show you guys the settings that you should be running. Uh, these will, like I said, work for PC and for console. So let's go ahead and go into our general. Uh, this is exclusive to console, but for my PC guys, I play on 120 FOV. I like this the most. I know that uh, aim assist, I think only goes up to I think 110 FOV or something like that, but I think this is the best. Also, you need to make sure that you're playing on effective. This will reduce the most amount of visual recoil that you get whenever you're playing. And you're, if you use independent, it's going to zoom in too far. A lot of people don't know this for some reason, but you should be running affected. This also does, like I said, change your visual recoil. Uh, so that's why people think PC players use a Cronus for some reason, but it's really just effective FOV. Uh, for my brightness, I use this on 50.19. Um, I could use 50, but it's just whatever. Uh, my HUD I use at 90. This could you could drop this down more. It really just depends on your monitor size. I think, in my opinion, uh, I have a 27 inch monitor, so I run it on a 90 uh, HUD display. Um, colorblind. I'm actually colorblind, so I use Deuteronomy because this is my official colorblind uh, mini map. You need to be using a square mini map 100%. You get to see more of the mini map, and you want to have it on mini map rotation as well. But for sure, you need to have a square minute map. If you're not using this, you're just behind. And then uh, we can go into all these other settings and none of these are really useful um, unless you want them. I have my FPS counter, server latency, packet loss and GPU temp all enabled. That way I know if my thermals are getting too high. All right, so on to graphics. So I actually run full screen borderless. Um, it's kind of frowned upon. You should be using full screen. So this is really just going to be up to you. Uh, full screen is better. You will get more frames, 100%, but I do use borderless. Um, then you want to make sure that your render resolution is set to 100 and uh, not any lower. I know some people are actually putting it higher, like Repulse has his, I think, on 200, but um, I just keep mine at 100. That way I'm running 1080p. Uh, aspect ratio automatic. This is default. V-Sync disabled. I use a custom frame rate limit and I cap mine to 150 for everything. I have this weird FPS glitch where I get where sometimes my frames just like tank randomly. Um, so I just have it set to 150. NVIDIA highlights disabled. Uh, NVIDIA reflex uh, latency. I have this on enabled plus boost. Um, I believe if you are uh, CPU bound that you should be using uh enabled and if you're a gpu pound you want to be using enable plus boost that way you guys can get the most optimization from your visual reduction as possible that way you can see the frames a lot more accurately so you can line up your shots a lot better it's it, it, honestly an incredible setting it helps increase your frames and it's reduces latency it's just insane uh gamma, gamma i use that 2.2 srgb uh shimming quality low texture Resolution low, uh, texture filter low, portal quality I have it on high. I have bullet impacts and sprays. I have this enabled. Some people don't have this on, but I like to know where I'm shooting, so I have this on. Uh, tinselation I have set to all on demand. Texture streaming disabled. Uh, shadow map resolution you want to have this on low. Uh, I read somewhere that having these enabled is actually better for you. That way these just save. That way they don't have to render. So in the long run, it ends up. Uh, of giving you a better boost to your frames uh because they don't have to render because it just saves in your cache uh particle lighting i have on high ray tracing you need to have this disabled ambient occlusion disabled uh screen space reflections you want to have that disabled as well uh anti-aliasing you're going to want to have this set to uh t uh, sma 2x in my opinion um but if you do have this lower than 2x you need to turn your filament strength up to one as it tells you right here, a lot of people don't know that and they run this at like like a, a 1x or they have it off. Um, but you want to have it on the. Um, you want to have it on at least 2x in my opinion, but if you have it on 1x or off, then you need to turn this all the way up to one. Uh, fill the depth, you need to have disabled 100%. Um, this creates like this weird blur and you don't want that. Uh, world motion blur, have that disabled. Weapon motion blur, have that disabled. Definitely, these are terrible settings. 
film grain, you want to have that set to zero. Dynamic resolution, you want to also have this set to zero. Uh, this is actually a new setting or turned off. So, and this is actually a new setting. Um, the setting helps like keep your resolution, like it ad helps adjust it to maintain a target frame rate. So, um, if it needs to drop your resolution to help you keep your frame rate at certain points in the game, that's what it does. And I don't really find that beneficial, so I have it disabled. Okay, so on to audio settings. I used uh, boost plus low. Like I said, this is uh, definitely a console setting that I would definitely use if I were you as well. When I have this on boost low, that way you guys can hear footsteps a lot better. Um, you can also hear uh, where they're coming from a little easier. But it's the game, the audio in this game is really just so trash anyway, so it's kind of hard to tell. But this does help. Uh, my master volume I have at 74. Uh, dialogue or music I have just turned off. Dialogue I have at 26. This is like for uh, in game comms. Uh, Effects volume, this really helps with footsteps. So I have this turned up almost to max and then juggernaut music disabled and I use classic hit markers. Okay, so these are going to be the controller settings that you want to use. I'm telling you these settings are crazy. I think they're really good. Um, some of these are settings that I picked up from a lot of pro players that I kind of implemented into my own gameplay. Uh, I do play on an Xbox controller uh, with the Xbox Elite version two. I play with two paddles, uh, so I'll get into those. But I think these are the settings that you're going to want to run. I, I, I think these are the best settings, honestly. So I use tactical flipped. So what that does is it flips your uh, triggers with your bumpers. So you hit your bumpers to shoot and your triggers to use your tacticals and lethals. This is something that I saw Aiden using when I switched the controller and I've just stuck with it. I think it's the best way to run it, in my opinion. Um, it, it just feels better to me, especially if you play claw. I think if you play claw, tactical flipped is the way to go. Um, Stick layout, I use default, obviously. I don't use, um, I don't invert. My dead zone, I have 0.05. My controller can go down to a 0.03 without drift, but then it just feels like too touchy to me, so I use 0.05. I run 6.6 with a 1.0 multiplier, so basically when I ADS, it's still like running 6.6. It's like running my hip fire sense. Um, this is a setting that you need to have on dynamic. It is the best aim assist. I've tried all the other ones. I've tried uh, linear and standard, and it does not feel good um so you want to run this is actually your response curve um if this feels the best 100 percent uh and then we're going to go over your aim assist type you want to have this on standard precision and focusing are way too sticky the aim assist is too sticky it's really hard to correct your shots you could be like off of them by like 10 pixels and you'll start getting aim assist so it's really hard to like correct your uh crosser back onto the target so it standard is the best way to go. You also get better hit fire uh, aim assist on standard. So it's, it's, it's definitely better. I forgot to mention you want to have a uh, vibration. In my opinion, you want to have that off. It really just distracts you. I know some players like playing with it, but I would turn it off. Uh, scale aim assist FOV. Uh, you want to have this enabled. Definitely. Um, this is going to affect how your aim assist works with your FOV. So you want to have this enabled. Um, weapon mount, I use ADS plus melee. That's pretty standard. Um, movement to exit mount, I have enabled. Uh, aim down sight behavior, set to hold, obviously. Equipment behavior, hold. Contextual tap is another setting you need to be using. This is, like I said, a, a console or PC setting. If you are playing on controller, you need to be using contextual tap. This makes it so where you, if you're in a, a pile of loot, when you hold reload you will only reload you won't pick anything up off the ground you won't struggle fumbling picking up items and stuff uh if you're in a car and you need to reload you hold reload and you won't get out it's the best setting that you can use in terms of looting it helps increase your looting speed it helps you not mess up your buttons instead of like reloading you're getting out it's just you need to be using contextual tap um delay ammo on automated switch this is kind of just preference i have it enabled um, but I'm almost like never running out of ammo. Uh, armor plate behavior. You need to have this set to apply all. This is makes it really easy for you to just push and hold Y once. And then while you're running, uh, you can worry about slide canceling, uh, trying to get away and plate up at the same time. It's incredibly beneficial than having to uh, just keep holding Y the entire time. So this is what I would use if I were you, even if you do play claw. Uh, slide behavior. You need to have this set to tap. Definitely. If you're using hold, you're just weird. Uh, Auto move forward, I have disabled. And then this is a new setting that a lot of players have just been switching to. I've been playing on this basically since I switched to controller. 
um, automatic tactical sprint. You need to be using this setting, in my opinion. It's incredible for your movement, which is really important in this game. It's one of the other factors that that takes you from uh, being a good player to an average player. Or if you have two good players who both have really good gun game, if one has better movement, generally they're going to win. So you want to be able to play at the top of your game at all time. You should be using automatic tactical sprint. What this does is whenever you're um, it's sprinting, it'll tax sprint for you automatically once you get your slide cancels in. Or if you have a tax sprint available, it'll use it for you. Um, definitely use this if you're if you're on controller. I would definitely use this. You could even use this on PC if you're on mouse and keyboard, to be honest. It's a really good setting. Um VF goal, I have this, I have this turned off. There's no point in recentering. Uh auto deploy shoot, I have this turned off as well. Future Dave here. I almost forgot to include my Xbox controller settings for you guys. Uh, for any of you guys that are using an Xbox controller on PC. This is what you guys are gonna look at. Um, so I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go ahead and edit my profile and I'm gonna show you guys the settings that I use um, on my Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. I do use, like I said, I use Control Freaks on my controller and I run two paddles, just these ones right here. This is Jump and this one is uh, Melee, I believe. So yeah, um, right here for my left stick, this is my mapping right here, like I said. This is uh, A. This is A and this is B. And then for my left stick, I don't have any sort of optimization on this one, but on my right stick, um, I actually use smooth, but it doesn't look like it's selected right now, but I use smooth. And I think this just feels the best. In my opinion, it's really good. And it's something that I would consider using if I were you. Um, for my triggers, I have these both at 50% um, and I have the trigger stoppers set all the way to the, the lowest setting. That way I don't have to move them much. This prevents accidental presses, and if I do press, like it doesn't, I, I don't really have to press it very hard either way. So, I like this the way I have it set up the most. It doesn't, it makes it so where it's not too sensitive, but I can still press it and not have to travel a far distance whenever I need to press it. Um, I have vibration on. I haven't touched this, but that's because I have it off in game, and my brightness really doesn't matter. So yeah, so let's go ahead and get back into the PC settings for you guys, and we'll show you guys uh, the best optimizations for your PC. Okay, boys, so we're at the desktop. We got my boy Asta here. We're going to go over some settings that we can use in order to help optimize our frames and get us a better performing PC. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go down to the search bar, and you're going to want to type in advanced system settings. Once here, you're going to want to go to performance and you're going to press settings right here. And then from here, you have all of, the, all of these are normally going to be ticked off. And what you're going to want to do is apply adjust for best performance. Now, you can use for best appearance if you want or let Windows choose and you choose. But best performance is by far the best one. This will help uh, remove a lot of the shadows from your desktop icons and it helps remove unwanted things that you just don't need that run in the background and really do affect your frames. So just turn those off. Okay, so for the next setting that we're gonna go over, we're gonna go down to the search bar. I'm gonna go to edit power plan right here. And then from here, you're gonna to wanna to click power options. Now, this is the best one you're gonna to want to use. I will have it linked down in the description how to get ultimate performance as a power option for your uh, power settings. Um, but if you don't have this, you're going to want to use, I believe it's like high performance, but you do have all these other settings right here um, that you can use like power saver and, and highest performance. Um, but what you want to do if you want the best possible power plan settings is you want to go to the link that I'll have in the description and it'll show you how to get ultimate performance as a power setting. Okay, so for the last setting, what you're going to want to do is you're going to open up your NVIDIA control panel. And you're going to want to go to manage 3D settings. And then from here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to just copy the settings that I use. Uh, I, these are the best settings that I've seen on the internet. And I think they've worked the best for me. So I'm just going to scroll, pause whenever you need to, and just go ahead and change the settings to what I have right here. Actually, this looks like this one reset. You want to have this to prefer maximum performance. I'll just go over them again. That way I make sure they're all set. You want to have CUDA core set to all. You want to keep going down. 
And I believe that was the only one that flipped on me. Uh, actually, no, right here, texture filtering. You want to have this set to prefer or highest performance. Then right here, you want to have turn it optimization set to auto, finally your optimization on or vertical sync. I believe this, you could have this on or off, but normally I do have it off. Yeah. And then after that, you just want to go ahead and click apply. Make sure that your settings save and then you're all good to go. These are the settings that I found every time I run a PC optimization to find or to give me the best amount of frames possible out of my PC. And that's it for the video. If this helped you guys out at all, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe with post notifications turned on. We're climbing our way to 2K subscribers. It'd be really awesome if you guys could help me get there. And like I said, these are got to be the best settings in my opinion in order to get the best amount of performance out of your PC and out of Warzone as well, that way you guys can get the most frames, get the best possible gaming settings, and I will see you guys in the next video.